Hello friends, this is Odds, and today I want to share with you briefly this game that we played some days ago. I was just warming up with a bit of Survivor before switching to Killer on stream, and we came across this spirit who seemed to be struggling quite a bit. Despite our teammates not doing anything extraordinary, she seemed to just really really have a hard time hooking anyone. Gems were lost, no hooks happened whatsoever, at one point I felt kinda bad, so I just made myself a little bit of a easier prey to catch. Uh, she did catch me and then slapped me on the hook, which, you know, I'm not gonna take personally, maybe it was just to prevent my character from screaming. And then shortly after all the gens are done, she comes back to me, and you can kind of tell by their playstyle that they have no it. Uh, plus, if they struggle so much to get hooks up until this point, why are they in this MMR bracket in the first place? Likely answer, no it. Uh, luckily, we had hope, so we were a little bit faster than usual, and we made it to the exit gate, and yep, uh, there's confirmed, no it. And this is a, a bit unfortunate. I feel like there are many players in a similar situation where they are trapped in a prison of their own making, and they don't, they don't ever get to improve. They play the strongest killers, sometimes with the best add-ons, uh, sometimes with massive, massive slowdown perks right on top of each other, uh, and or know it on top. And these are things that will win you games if survivors just don't play super good. And you don't really need to improve or do anything. Basically, you put one or all of these things onto your build and hope that survivors make a mistake or don't play efficiently, and then you win some of your games. And maybe you're in a MMR bracket that you don't quite belong to just yet. And is there any issue with this? Shouldn't play people the way they shouldn't they play the game the way they want? Absolutely. But if you're interested in actually learning and actually getting better at your killer and your overall ability to control the game and know what you're doing. Uh, this kind of strategy, I don't think is going to help you very much. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to present you with a very simple build, very, very simple stuff that is mostly universal and extends to many killers so that you feel more comfortable playing a build that might not be as competitive or as strong, but that will actually teach you things and will let your own skill manifest. So you'll see how good you're actually getting at the game. Uh, now, the cornerstone, of this build, the cornerstone of this build is the combo of Discordance, which will let you know when two or more survivors are on a gen, and Tinkerer. This is a really, really strong combination. Many of the perks that are really strong today will be nerfed in the future, the developers have already told us, but these two perks don't seem to be among those, at least that we know so far. So these are safe perks to play now and in the future. And these are, by the way, perks that we run on many of our 50 win streaks because the information that they give is just so, so good. So with Discordant, you'll know when two people on a gen, and with Tinkerer, you'll know when that gen is at 70%, which is by itself already very, very good. And this can happen more than once on a single gen, by the way, and you'll lose your terror radius and become undetectable, which means you're not seen by Kindred and so on, and you can often approach the generator. These two perks together are great. At the start of the game, you will likely find people very, very quickly, um, and many killers benefit from finding groups of people rather than finding just one person. So I highly, highly recommend this. Uh, and later throughout the game, you will also be able to know when it's a good idea to drop a chase and have a good chance to start another chase uh, or, or transition after a hook into another chase kind of uh, seamlessly and with a bit of an advantage thanks to the lack of terror radius. Even on killers that are very, very loud, like Nemesis, this is still really, really good. Not only that, this lets you begin to grind your, your inner gears in your brain and start to figure out what you need to do in a game. It's very simple. If you have seen three survivors that you're not interested in, because let's say you haven't hooked them enough, and one tinkerer procs across the map, now you know that the fourth survivor that you really are interested in is right there. Let's say that you have a perk like, say, the best for last, and you're looking for someone that is not the obsession with Discordant, you'll you'll be able to find people that uh, I guarantee at least one of them to not be the obsession. So this works extremely well to just more or less tell you what is going on um, in the game. Let's say someone's on a hook and they're about to hit stage two and you don't know if you should camp it or not. Well, if Tinkerer tells you that everyone is far away or Discordant tells you that everyone is far away, maybe you don't need to. And if it tells you that if it tells you absolutely nothing, then maybe you'll want to stay there thinking that people are coming. So lots of information that these two perks will give you. And on top of that, you are simply going to pair it with one regression perk. Now this can be corrupt, this can be jolt, which is a common perk that everybody starts with. It can be ruin, whatever you want. Just just take one perk, just a single perk that works well on your killer. Uh, this is not particularly for Trapper or anything, this is just generic, obviously, if you're playing a killer like Huntress, for example, which doesn't do basic attacks, maybe Deadlock is better for you. Um, 
So feel free to pick the one that suits your needs best, but just, just pick one and get really good at using it. And this will help you not, uh, it will help you to know when you should focus your efforts and when you should drip chase, as opposed to just having three slowdown perks that just kind of carry you through, uh, through any mistakes you make. And on top of that, the perk that I really highly advise is no way out from the trickster. This perk will encourage you to hook multiple people, which is healthy for you. And if you're running barbecue, um, it does also pair well with the blood point um, extra that you get for hooking each people. And it will extend games past the five, past the fifth gen, which means that you don't lose the game 20 seconds after the fifth gens are out. You can actually plan ahead. And to this day, this perk is still quite rare among killers and survivors don't always play around it really well. Now, um, if you do not feel so inclined to run Discordant and Tinkerer, maybe because you feel like you can find people really quickly or Tinkerer doesn't have great synergy with your, let's say, stealth killer. Another alternative that I highly recommend is Lethal Pursuer and Barbecue and Chili. Lethal Pursuer will make maps that are really tough or survivors split up and you are left clueless so much easier at the start. It will let you find one person that is in a bad spot and with many killers, especially stealth killers, that can be extremely, extremely useful. If you down them or injure them and decide to go away, you will now have a rough idea of who is around you uh, and what you can expect uh, in terms of which gens will get done, which is super useful. And if you down that person and you don't have anyone else around you, then Barbecue will tell you where to go after that. And Barbecue will constantly keep pointing you towards people in the distance, seeing them healing, do objectives, side objectives, etc. You pair these two with the previous uh, idea of one slowdown perk and no way out or something equivalent, and you have a build that encourages you to hook different people, encourages you to waste zero time, and also ingrains into your brain what the spawns for survivors are like. Many times you can have these preconceived notions that survivors are always opposite from you or are never next to you. With Lethal Pursuer, you'll realize just how diverse and how um, sometimes unpredictable spawns are. And if you ever get the luck where all four survivors spawn in one little corner, you're gonna go there and cause massive troubles to them. It will also give you a really good uh, idea of when to drop an early chase. Sometimes you'll find a survivor in a bad spot, hit them once, let them self-care forever, and now you know where the other three or two are so that you can always disrupt someone doing gens, as opposed to chasing someone that is doing absolutely nothing while you lose three gens at a time. So this is a really, really good set of alternatives. If you have absolutely no teachables and you are still bent on using Noed, I would recommend at least that you could reconsider your build. If you want to run a Noid build that will actually um, let you express some of your skill and plan ahead of time, I do recommend that you still run some slowdown. Uh, let's say Jolt. Uh, Sloppy Butcher is also an excellent perk for many killers. If you if you can get it on your blood web, it's a common perk, just like Jolt, so everyone should have it. And one thing I see very, very rarely is Bitter Murmur. Bitter Murmur is another common perk, so it should be very accessible to anyone. And it goes really well with Noid. Now you don't need to hook a person and camp them, confirm the kill, and maybe get an extra kill or two with Noid. You will have knowledge of who is where. When gens are done, people around those gens will show their aura to you. This will let you know where people are headed, which gens are going to be done next. It will make your slowdown perk shine a little bit more. And on top of that, at the end of the game, you'll see everyone's location for 10 seconds. So you're not going to passively play Noid, hook a guy, and watch the other three run away. Instead, you're going to plan for it. it ideally, you will get one person killed, uh, or have one person very close to dying, and then catch them with Noid near the end, while still having time to catch somebody else. So if you're going to rely on Noid, which, you know, is completely respectable, uh, do give a shot to Bitter Murmur, because those 10 seconds of seeing everyone can immediately let you know where they're headed, which exit gates they're going to try to open, or what mistakes they've made, like hiding in some corner where you're not that far and you can totally catch them off guard. This is also another really common, easy perk that survivors often don't expect on just an average killer. So I highly, highly recommend it. It will give you an idea of the behavior survivors take um, after completing a gem. And much like Lethal Pursuer, when you eventually take this perk off for something that is stronger, you will still feel some of its benefits because that information and that game sense will now be a bit more ingrained into your brain. It seems like in the next few months, we're going to see a lot of changes for perks, for gameplay, for all of these things. And it would really be a shame if we head into those changes uh, with an attachment to the old. So I say, let's embrace those changes. Uh, you try to get better with your own skill and try to depend less 
uh, on on your perks, or at least have the perks aid you in what you're doing rather than carry you. And hopefully this video was helpful. If you think that this is something that a, a friend of yours that's picking up the game would benefit from, feel free to send them this video and maybe we'll do them a little favor. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.